So Behaviors came out with a developer update on August 2022. Earlier this month, we launched our largest balance patch to date, making changes to over 40 perks, including the meta and various base game mechanics. With such a major shakeup, we have been keeping an extra close eye on the feedback and performance since the update released to ensure that nothing gets out of hand. Now that we've had a chance to see how things play out, we have prepared our first follow-up round of changes to fine-tune the balance. Please note that these tweaks listed here are by no means the only changes we may make. We'll continue monitoring and adjusting things based on your feedback. Thanatophobia. Following the mid-chapter update, Thanatophobia quickly rose in popularity, and it's easy to see why. Between the increased numbers on the perk itself and the longer baseline gen repair times, Thanatophobia now slows down generous pretty significantly, particularly with killers who have an easier time keeping multiple survivors injured, for example, Legion or Plague. This can make Thanatophobia feel a little oppressive, especially when paired with other slowdown perks. To address this, Thanatophobia will be receiving a rework. In the 6.1.2 update, each injured, dying, or hooked server now provide a 1, 1 1.5, 2% action speed penalty. If all first four survivors are injured, dying, or hooked, the Nidophobia will grant an additional 12% penalty to survivor action speeds. This change will make the Nidophobia nearly as potent as before if all survivors are injured, but will require more effort on the killer's part to get full value. So the previous version of Thanatophobia used to give a 5.5 penalty to survivor repairing, sabotaging, and cleansing action speeds. Now behavior is changing Thanatophobia so it ramps up to a total maximum of a 20% penalty. But in order to get full value, you need to make sure that each survivor is injured. A lot of people have been complaining that Legion is not fun to play against, and this change in particular was designed to make games feel a lot less like molasses along with the other killer baseline changes. Metal Man. With Endurance stats effect updated, Metal Man continues to be an outlier. While it provides a similar effect to Endurance, this perk currently does not deactivate when performing a conspicuous action. This is by design, which is reflected in the perk's description not mentioning Endurance. Since activating Metal Man is so difficult, it wouldn't be fair to lose your hard-earned protection so easily. We wanted to clear up this inconsistency and give Metal Man a slight rework while we're at it. Taking two protection hits will now activate Metal Man. Only two! Whoa! That's, that's huge! And will now activate Metal Man, granting the Endurance stats effect. While the endurance effect is active, your aura will be revealed to the killer when they are further than 12, 14, 16 meters away. Like other endurance effects, performing a conspicuous action will cause it to deactivate prematurely and it will not protect you from entering the dying state if you're already in deep wounds. Since this will make it a little weaker, we reduce the number of protection hits required to compensate. We believe these changes will make the perk both easier to use and more interesting to play around. So with this middle man nerf, they made it so that it's not possible to stack endurance status effects with each other anymore with the Metal Man, but they made it easier to use. I'm not so sure that this will change that much about this perk. It's easier to get a proc off during a chase rather than having to be unhooked or picked up with We're Going to Live Forever. I'm not so sure if we're going to see that much use out of this perk still though, due to the fact that it's now an endurance status effect rather than ignoring a dying state effect. Pain Resonance, Merciless Storm, and Dead Men's Switch. Pain Resonance was changed such that it no longer forces survivors to momentarily stop repairing the generator. This effectively prevented the perk from activating Dead Men's Switch on its own. The killer would need to chase them off the generator manually. However, this change caused an unexpected combination to appear. Since this new version allowed survivors to continue working on the generator, Merciless Storm would continue spawning an excessive amount of skill checks, nearly 40, after the generator regresses. To remedy this, we're restoring Pain Resonance generator interruption. Though the killer would not receive a notification, this will cause Merciless Storm to no longer combo with Pain Resonance. That said, this will bring back the combo of Pain Resonance and Dead Men's Switch, therefore reducing the duration of Dead Men's Switch to 20, 25, 30 seconds in order to make this perk combo less oppressive than it previously was. Pre-patch, just so you know, Dead Men's Switch activated for 45 seconds. I haven't been using that many generator slowdown perks, and I'm genuinely curious how this change will actually affect the meta. Overall, it looks like the developers realize there's an extreme combo with Merciless Storm, and I'm hoping that this helps a lot of survivors out that are having to deal with killers using extremely oppressive generator builds. I've been hearing this a lot while I've been streaming. I personally haven't been looking into it, but I hope this helps you guys out. I know this is an issue that you guys are running into. The clown is currently affected by a bug which allows him to retain haste effect from his antidote. To prevent this from being exploited, we recently kill switched the clown. This issue has now been resolved and, it'll be, and Clown will be re reactivated in 6.1.2. So there was some visual effects that people were complaining about on the orange glyphs, behaviors changing those glyphs to make them a little bit different. Matchmaking incentives reward you with additional blood points for playing whichever role is, demand at, is in demand at the time. When the mid-chapter launched, these incentives were not working as intended, granting 100% blood point bonus to survivors at all times, including when there were some more survivors playing than killers. This had an adverse effect on matchmaking. While killer queue times were fairly quick, survivor queue times skyrocketed. This system needed to be disabled after several hours. We've investigated the issue and found the cause. 
Unfortunately, this won't make it into the 6.1.2 update. Matchmaking incentives will be re-enabled on the 6.2.0 public test build. This is a little bit worrying to me. I kind of wish the matchmaking incentives were, were going to be re-enabled in 6.1.2 because it would greatly help the problem of matchmaking not giving people the correct teammates for their appropriate skill levels, whether it be killer or survivor, where there's some people that might get some instances where the killer that they're going against is too strong or their teammates are too weak on Survivor. The major thing that I hope that comes from this update is that a lot of people that are having trouble against Legion will probably be rejoicing due to the changes in Thanatophobia, and hopefully they won't have as tough as a time against killers that can injure all the survivors very fast. So this was the August 22 update. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and yo, thanks for watching guys.